Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Mike from SneakerHistory.com and we're back with another video. And guys, I'm excited for what we're looking at today. Um, I know you've probably been seeing, you know, between the sneakers app, uh, all the sneaker outlets, that there looks to be a pretty, pretty significant push to start getting some LeBron retros out. Uh, more than more than normal because we've gotten the threes retroed, we've gotten the seven retroed, and now oh we got uh, Air Zoom Generation as well, and now with the things like the uh, LeBron Player Exclusive or Player Edition bracket they had, uh, which caused a lot of controversy with the way people were voting, um, we're starting to look like they're going to open a vault to start getting some more LeBrons out, and then we've also got the LeBron watches back. Now. With that, we first retro we actually got stateside, or I think as a general release, was the Lakers uh, LeBron 8 that retroed, I guess a couple weeks back. I'll go ahead and put a picture up there for you guys. Uh, but it, it retroed and sold out pretty, pretty quickly. Now the 8, which was released back in 2010 during LeBron's first season with the Miami Heat, has been a pretty big fan favorite among LeBron fans and just, you know, Nike basketball fans. Uh, you had the you know infamous colorways as the well I guess not infamous to say that because it's sold out really quickly and it's super expensive now but probably the most legendary colorway I should say is going to be the South Beach colorway and of course you guys know what that looks like. Uh, you also had things like the uh, Miami Night Lows um, entourages. Did a bunch of different different colorways available and they just they they did a, a ton of awesome things with the sneaker. Now. With the LeBron 8 being retro, the first actual uh, retro that happened was a Jim Red colorway. Now, this Jim Red colorway was supposed to release worldwide, you know, at least that's what the initial thought was, but it actually was a China exclusive as a part of the Beijing pack. And that's what we're gonna be looking at today. I was actually able to get my hands on a pair through GOAT at a really good price. Actually, I think I paid under retail. Uh, no, I think I paid right at retail. Right at retail for him because there wasn't a bunch of hype around it right now. Um, you know, most of LeBron retros, unless it's something just crazy, really rare, the pricing is pretty typically, uh, it bounces out after the release day. It goes back down to around, you know, retail plus fees. Now, first thing we'll see is the original box here. So they've gone back to that original uh, LeBron 8 box with him and the lion on the front. So you guys can see a picture of that. And it's still the drawer in their pullout box, which they're cool, but they're just way oversized. I have my GOAT Verified tag here, and by no means is this a, uh, a sponsored video, but I do just like to know, like, let you guys know that, hey, if you're buying from GOAT, they do go through, like, and show you the process of the authentication. And because these were a, a China exclusive, part of that, uh, again, that, that Beijing pack, there were only 600 pairs of the pack. That included the Empire Jade 18, which I'll put a picture in the pack here as well. But they released the 8 separately as a standalone retro. Now, I don't think there are any differences between the 8s here and the 8 in the pack. I don't know if they may be individually numbered inside the shoe along with the box itself. But I know they look pretty dang similar. And crazy thing about this is that I know I guess GOAT opened up a facility in, in China as well, so that way they can do business, you know, more around the world. And actually, these came from, from Hong Kong. So they have, again, took a surprisingly quick turnaround time as well. So once I bought them, I think the longest time was the, uh, the authentication process, which, hey, I, I'd rather you guys take your time and get it right as opposed to just sending me anything. So I really do appreciate that they did go through it, you know, still authenticate them, send me the, the, the card to make sure it's done. But the, the shipping process is actually pretty quick. So I guess I just want to kind of say, you know, kudos to GOAT for you know, keeping that process going. So, you know, I appreciate that. Now, here is the LeBron 8 and Jim Ray colorway. Now, I will say, when I first saw the color codes for the sneaker when it was releasing, I thought it was the um, the, the Christmas pair, the, the 8v2 from, you know, Christmas 2010. Now, the color code on this one is going to be, or the colorway, I should say, is going to be Jim Red, Black, and Cucumber Calm. Now, Reading that colorway, I was kind of skeptical because the green on the laces on the LeBron 8 Christmas were a brighter green, more probably like an apple green. And I really thought maybe they just changed it up a bit. You know how the color you know, names will change after a while. And especially with the release of the Kobe 8 Grinch, I assumed that we would be getting that Christmas you know, LeBron just to kind of go with that same thing. Now, and that again, because these released late 2020. Now clearly we got something completely different. So this is a brand new colorway 
of the LeBron 8 V1. And with this one, you're gonna get a really, really cool color. It was again, a China exclusive. So you kind of have those, uh, that red and gold colorway you see that a lot of like the Chinese New Year sneakers have. Uh, you know, some of the China exclusive, just that red and gold color. It's, it's pretty typical um, that, that you would see. Now, with the V1, as you guys know, or maybe not know, the first version of LeBron sneaker is typically, or the LeBron 8, I should say, was more of a premium materials with leathers and suede, where you had the V2, which I'll put a picture of here, that was more of a synthetic material to make it lighter throughout the season. And then last, you had the V3, or postseason. They replaced the whole upper with with Nike Fuse material, which was very popular at that time. They removed the full Air Max unit and replaced it with a heel Air Max and then a zoom combination. It might have been a zoom four foot, four foot cushioning. Now, with this particular sneaker, I am really impressed by the materials on it. Um, again, I'm gonna make close up pictures for you guys to see it, but it has a really nice like, cracked leather on the, the toe box and upper, you guys see here. It is a red coating and you can see the hints of like goldish yellow coming out of it. You're gonna have the Nike swoosh. God, I don't wanna say, I guess it is, I guess, debossed into it, but it also has like kind of a, a coating as well to kind of give it a little shine. So you see that right there. You're gonna have some, uh, looks like, oh yeah, they got James right here at the end of the, uh, the eyelids here. And you're gonna have just that, that, a lot of that premium material going around the sneaker, including the ankle collar here and a little bit on the tongue where we get that traditional lion logo that we typically don't see that much anymore. I think there were a couple models of the uh, 17 that may have still utilized it, but typically we don't get the lion logo anymore. Now you're also gonna have those pieces of the sneaker that were synthetic and that's gonna be right here on the, um, love, sorry, lateral side. And they're gonna have a lot of the, that old Flywire technology. Now I can't remember if this was the first generation of Flywire where, I mean, it was plastic, so I don't know how much it really did, but it was there for containment, of course. You're also gonna have the same setup here with the Flywire on the closer to the heel, again, more lockdown. And the same thing's gonna be said for the medial side as well. Now, still done up in that gym red, but it does give a bit of a different color, a look, because that color on the leather will show up differently when you put it on that plastic slash synthetic material. Now, you're gonna have your Nike swoosh done up in like a gloss black, with a that cucumber calm kind of outlining it here and i really like that color um that cucumber calm again we're going to talk more about the outsole here in a little while but it just it's really nice contrast to the red that's put on here and that's again that green is what i thought it was going to be the christmas model now if we go into the laces here just a flat red lace nothing special and no extra laces and on the aglets you're going to have lebron on one and eight on the other so just let you know what shoe it is now the tongue is gonna say design and engineered to the exact specifications of Mr. LeBron James with 82 in red and eight in that cucumber calm. And we'll get, of course, a good picture for you guys as well. Now on the insole, let me get a, pull it out of here for you guys. It's always the task, isn't it? Let me see, let me see. All right, well, you know what? I can't quite get it out of there, it looks like. Um, but it's gonna have witness, like old, like LeBron, uh, you know, that Fonk used to put in his shoes, and of course we'll get a better picture for you guys as well. Now you're gonna have your heel tab, again in that plastic material, in that gym red, and LeBron's signature in that gold color at the bottom. And let's see, were we missing anything on the upper? No, it looks like we covered that all, and again, I think it's done very well. Uh, premium filling materials up top, done nicely. I don't see many like glue stains or anything. I mean, of course, they're gonna have a few because that's just kind of what happens. Now we have our full Air Max unit down here and it's going to have, again, that cucumber calm color you can see peeking out through the bubble. And on our outsole, same LeBron 8 traction that we're typically used to. And this is gonna be done in kind of two different colors here. So we have a cucumber calm in the main part of the uh, traction. We're gonna have a LeBron a line logo here. And you're gonna have that the hourglass or eight color, or I'm sorry, eight shape at the heel. And then you're really gonna have this really cool glow in the dark setup. So you have right around the edges of the outsole, you have glow in the dark colors and on the toe boxes are on the toe as well. Now I'll put a picture up here because they glow really bright actually. And uh, I'm really surprised because sometimes when you get a shoe that glows in the dark, typically they didn't glow that much. It just a little bit to it, but these have a really solid glow. And again, check out the picture up top because they, uh, they look really cool. Now, shoe's really nice. I, I'm really happy to have it sizing wise. 
this is my first LeBron 8 I've owned. I've really started buying LeBrons at the 9. And I will say they fit kind of snug. I think if I'm playing ball in them, I like this, like the sizing of it being pretty, pretty snug at my size 10. But if I'm just going to wear them casually, I think it might like a little bit more room. So just like the LeBron 9, I would go up half the size, so 10 and a half. I think that may be a good move in the LeBron 8 as well. Now, of course, it's always good to try it on yourself if you can because everyone's foot's different. So I definitely would advise trying it on if you can. Um, if not, if you remember what you wore in LeBron 8s back in the day, I'm quite sure it's the same thing. I don't think there's any differences between the sizing then and the sizing now. So if it's snug then, it's going to be snug now. Now, what do you guys think of the LeBron 8 Retro? Again, it's one of the, the most famed LeBron models. Um, looks like we're going to be getting a few more of these. There's, um, there's rumors that the LeBron 8 South Beach will be releasing again. We've already got the 8 Graffiti through the LeBron watch, which was a PE he wore uh, during the lockout year. So, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm pretty, pretty excited. Uh, I just want to be able to, I don't need all the colors, I just want to kind of get one of each of the retros that comes out just to have it in collection to, to build that back up. Because I used to have a lot of LeBrons, but some time back I had sold, again, part of my collection and a lot of those LeBrons went. So, super happy about that. How do you guys feel about that LeBron, uh, I guess, vote, that vote back? Do you guys really like that Ring Ceremony 10? Are you going to be trying to get it whenever it does come out? I don't know, you guys let me know how you feel about the LeBron retros. Let me know how you feel about these Jim Red LeBrons. Um, down in the comments, man. I love to talk to you guys about these sneakers. Uh, this is, again, really great to hear your thoughts. Do you like it? Do you not? Do you have them? Are you looking for them? I'll put the link down to Goat where I did get them and seem like a lot of sizes are still below retail. The size 10 did jump up in price for some reason, but I'm not too sure why, but we'll go ahead and check them out and keep. make sure to like, subscribe, hit the notification button, tell your friends, tell your family. Because with you guys' support, I'm able to keep building this channel. And I really do appreciate all of you guys. So thank you again. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at MadWatcher789. You can also find me with Nick and Robbie and Rowett on the Sneaker History Podcast that we release every Monday and every Thursday. And until next time, guys, see ya.